Hi, in the today's video, I'm going to discuss two methods which are found in the system threading task parallel class in C Sharp. And these are parallel for and parallel for each. These two methods are used for executing loops in parallel, taking advantage of multiple processes in order to perform iterations concurrently. The difference between the two is that parallel for is actually used for parallel execution of a traditional for loop when the number of iterations is known and the parallel for each is used for parallel execution over any i enumerable collection. And both of them, compared to the traditional for and for each loop, can provide fast execution times for compute intensive tasks or large data sets. Now, let's start with a small code example, and then we're going to see how we can use them in our code and what the difference between the two methods is. Let's take a look at our first code example. We're going to do 1 billion iterations using traditional for loop and then using parallel for loop. And we're going to measure the time that it takes to execute each loop by using a stopwatch. So let's first run the program and see the output. This could take some time. And we have the traditional for loop executing in close to two seconds, 1.657 to be precise, and the parallel for loop is executing in 771 milliseconds. So it's uh, two times and more faster, which demonstrates that the parallel for loop can be faster than the traditional for loop, but this also depends on what you're executing. So I'm going to change my code to demonstrate how the traditional for loop can actually be faster since the parallel for loop is associated with several overheads as well. So let's do that quickly. Then I made a single change to my code. The number of iterations, I reduced them from 1 billion to 1 billion. So let's run the code one more time and see if there is any difference. And as you can see, this time the for loop executes much faster than our parallel for loop. The parallel for loop took 28 milliseconds to execute, which means that it is 28 times slower. This is the case because the number of iterations is relatively small and each iteration of the loop is actually non-compute intensive enough to benefit substantially from using parallel execution. And overall, the traditional for loop is faster in this case because the overhead associated with managing multiple threads in the parallel for loop outweighs the benefits of the parallel execution. What should be your main takeaway from this code example? The parallel for method is not magical. It does not guarantee you faster execution. So make sure you understand when to use traditional for loop and when to use parallel for loop. And you can pause the screen and read the text. And I'm going to get to the next code example. And now let's take a look at the next code example where we're going to use traditional for each loop. And in the same code example, we're going to use the parallel for each loop and time the two executions. And this time we're going to be iterating over a list of integers. If you remember at the beginning, we stated that the for each and the parallel for each loop should be used when we execute over any i enumerable collection. And in this case, we are using a list of integers. And we're going to use the compute method, which simulates a more compute intensive task by using 1000 iterations inside the loop for each element. So let's run the code and see the output. And I had to pause the screen, see the execution to close to 40 seconds. You can see the result, the traditional for each loop took 30 seconds and 478 milliseconds to execute. The parallel for each loop took 8,996 milliseconds, which makes it about close to four times faster. But again, this depends on the work that is being done inside the loop. So I'm going to change the code again, just to demonstrate that parallel for each 
can be actually slower than the traditional for each loop. Let's do that quickly. And all I have to do is change the compute method. We're going to change it so that it returns the square of the input integer. So let's run the code and this time it should be much faster. And you can see the traditional for each loop took only 6 milliseconds, while the parallel for each loop was much slower. Again, you need to know when to use the for each loop and when to take advantage of the parallel execution in the parallel for each loop. Again, I'm going to summarize this quickly and I'm going to show it to the screen next. You can pause the screen and see when you should use the for each loop and when you should use the parallel for each loop in C sharp in order to take advantage of parallel execution. And that is all for today from me. If you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.